Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Grizzly True Crime. My name is Gizela K, and today what I want to do is I really, I literally spent the entire day, I mean, from 9 o'clock this morning until 10 o'clock tonight, <laughs> analyzing the press conferences, all of them that happened, okay? So we're going to look, I've put a presentation together for you. If you are brand new to this channel, um, we do a lot of presentation time. I love deep dives. I love map time. At the end, I always waffle, you know, so that's called waffle time. If you are a member, often you will get the entire stream in your members only playlist. And sometimes I cut down the streams for public uh, replay watchers, right? Because I don't want to watch like a huge stream sometimes. So yeah, we, we like presentations, map time, deep dives. And man, I'm very passionate about um, missing persons cases. It just bugs me that people can just disappear in 2022. Like how is that even possible? In this case, is no different to, you know, I know it's very popular on the internet now, but when I covered it on August 8th already as a missing person Monday case, I mean, I'm as passionate about this case as any other case. It's like, where's Kylie? Where are these missing people? And what can we do to help? What we can do to help is, of course, spread the word, share the hashtags. Let's see if there's some other cases in the area as well that we could share at the same time, which we've also been doing, like Jolisa Fuentes, which I shared yesterday. Please check out that as well. <laughs> You're reminding me there's also snarky time. Yes. <laughs> maps and waffles and maps. Exactly. Okay. So uh, welcome to the mob crew. Welcome everyone that's here. Sorry if I miss you. If you do see a wrench next to your name today and you don't normally have that, I've just dished out some temporary wrenches uh, just to help me out in the stream if that's okay. Um, it's just for today, um, and I kind of rotate those temp ranges around. Just if you can help, if you see a, a bot rolling or something, right? Like, you know those, you know those types. Uh, like a troll, like real mad trolling or a, or a bot. Just hit the three little dots on the side if one of my um, mods don't catch it and just say hide user from this channel or just delete their message, okay? All right, so are we ready? If you have any information, please call 530-581-6320, option 7, about the case Kylie Rodney, or you can email the Sheriff's Department as well. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Darren. Yeah, music uh, sets the tone. Wonderful opening for a sad situation, right? We could play that footage again. Thank you again to Steve Fisher, SF Investigates on Twitter, for the wonderful drone footage that he shared. He's out there. He spoke to Kylie's um, grandfather for almost four hours yesterday. So, you know, he's helping out to try to piece this puzzle together. You know, try to find Kylie. Like, what is going on there? All right. So, I'm going to take this off now. And there I am. Okay. So, um, Mars, just please let me know if you need me to slow the chat even more. I'm looking at my phone as well. And uh, yeah, missed nothing yet. I just wanted to start off nice and slow so everyone get the notification, get ready, and then we can deep dive what law enforcement has said. Now, the reason I've done this is because, you know, this case <laughs> is, it's been purely uh, speculatory, speculative up to now. It's like, we don't know what's going on. And I just, you know, it's a very frustrating case because all of us really want Kylie to be found. Um, I, I really feel for her um, family and friends. And of course, up to now, people who've come forward, they've controlled the narrative, you know, what we've heard from Sammy, we've heard from Ronnie, like, okay, but let's deep dive what law enforcement actually said, okay? <laughs> Thank you, Rochelle. <laughs> Guys, I just want to say as well, if you do want to, um, you know, get super stickers or something like that, I will read them all out at the end because I don't want to interrupt the stream the whole time with that. So if you do want to do that, feel free to do that. Uh, but we could also do that later in waffle time if you want, okay? Yeah, and welcome to everyone from Popcorn Planet. Welcome from uh, wherever you're coming from. Thank you so much for being here. And thank you for all those content creators who, you know, have had me on. I was on the Pascal show yesterday. So if you missed me yesterday, go check out his show. I was there for two and a half hours. We were arguing hard about a picture, and we can get to that later as well. All right, so let's look at what law enforcement said, all right, so that we could just, it actually really helped me clear up some stuff, okay, because they've actually said a lot, as long as we listen extremely carefully. 
that's what I, that's normally, you know, that's what I do. That's my style. I listen carefully, but I do know we've all been listening to Sammy and I'm like, you know what? She took the spotlight. I think she might want the spotlight, you know, and it might just be that. Um, but I want to hear what law enforcement said. So I've <laughs> broken it down for you. Are we ready? So here's a missing person flyer, by the way, for Kylie Rodney, last seen on the 6th of August, 2022 at 12.30 a.m. in Truckee, California. She's 16 years old, five foot seven. She's quite, she's quite tallish, huh? For, for age and everything, right? Um, blonde hair, hazel eyes, 118 pounds, driving a silver 2013 Honda CRV, California license plate number 8YUR127. So if you see that license plate number, because you don't know if someone is maybe, well, they might have changed the license plate numbers too, but you might spot it even if the car has been, I don't know what, spray painted, repainted, if the sticker has been taken off or whatever it is. Um, yeah, don't expect miracles. Uh, Adventures with Purpose is heading out there. Oh, sorry, they did head out there. They are arriving today, so I think they've, they should be arriving any minute now. They did say late Friday, so I guess it's almost midnight my time. For me, this is late Friday, yes? Um Again, thank you to everyone in advance for joining membership and getting super stickers. Let's get into this, right? Here we go. So all the tip line, the tip line, the, the links and everything are in the description box, okay? If you need it. Okay, so here we go. Now I did a quick timeline recap just so that we can all be on the same page and then we deep dive every single um, <laughs> conference they had. The press conferences happened on the 9th of August the 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th, and 15th. If you missed the streams on all those, they are available as well for you to watch where we watched it live together. And there was also, um, there were some community meetings, which I've also got the dates for in this presentation. So Kylie was supposed to meet her mom in Reno for hot August nights on August 5th, 2022, but changed her mind last minute to attend the party. Okay, so we're gonna listen very carefully now. If you have a notebook, I would encourage you to write notes. It does help, I must say, I wrote notes all day. And then I made it this presentation for you. It really helps. I've got Grizzly Notebooks, if you didn't know. I'm a true crime author, but I, I mostly sell these now. Grizzly Notebooks. I really like making them for you. So you can collect them if you wanted to on Amazon. Um, and so I'm going to have all my notes here. But let's just back it up one more one more step. Um, Kylie apparently went with Kate Kuno, one of her, it seems to be best friends. She's in a lot of pictures with her on social media and they follow each other. Okay, as does Megs and Kylie. So that makes a little more sense, right? Those are the closer friends, I would say. She went with uh, Kate to Reno on August 4th for the day, according to Kate. Then on August 5th, Kylie was supposed to meet her mom in Reno for hot August nights, right? But then she changed her mind last minute to attend the party, which I find a little bit strange just because if the party was planned for a whole month in advance and it wasn't impromptu or whatever it is, why would she decide only last minute? Okay, you know what? I'm going to go. It could just be like an introvert thing, but I mean... We don't know, you know, it could be like, I don't know, I don't really want to go to that and I'm younger than everyone or whatever, or maybe it's, she thought it's dangerous, which sounded like it is, it or was a dangerous party, but she decided to go anyway, last minute, okay? She was seen on surveillance footage in Truckee at a local business at 6.08 p.m. on August 5th, 2022. Okay, law, law enforcement has not named that store. I uh, don't think they want anyone to arrest them or go there or something, you know, of course. But um, yes, in Truckee, 6 or 8 p.m. August 5th. Okay, Sammy allegedly arrived at the party at 9 p.m. on August 5th. And according to Sammy, Mags and Kylie arrived together at the party around 10 p.m. Then Mags left within 10 minutes. Kylie asked her mom at 11.30 p.m. if she could extend her curfew and said she would leave in about 45 minutes, which means that she planned to leave at quarter past 12 you know, 15 minutes past midnight on August 6th. Sammy allegedly left at uh, 25 minutes past 12 on August 6th, and there was obviously the convoy of cars that campers saw leaving, a campers unrelated to the party, right? Uh, leaving at 12.30. So that kind of lines up to what Sammy's saying when she left. So basically, if you look at this, 63 minutes after telling her mom that she would leave in 45 minutes, Kylie's phone went dead. And there's been no activity since, and it cannot be located. Okay, but we are going to get into some statements um, that the sheriff has made, right? Okay, so let's do that. I do just want to debunk this for a second, and I'm basing it on what law enforcement is saying. Thank you, Mary, for this. Um, I just want to say, Ryan Updurch doesn't think there was a party. 
a part of me also didn't think there was a party, but law enforcement has put out officially on their official Facebook page, Twitter page, that there were two to 300 people at this party and that the party did happen. So I, I don't know. I just, it would be hard for me to believe that they would just say that just for the sake of it, right? So Sammy says, this is just a quick recap. Sammy says she contacted Kylie and that Kylie called her. So remember, she said, I last contacted Kylie and she said Kylie called her. So that's obviously a conflict, but we're not focusing on that today. But that was at 1236 a.m. On August the 6th, 2022, at approximately 9 a.m., Kylie's mom went to Starbucks to see if Kylie showed up because she was planning to meet her friends there to go camping. All right. So at approximately 7 p.m., on Saturday. That's that's the time I've heard that she was officially reported missing um, on Saturday, August 6th, right? Kylie was officially reported as missing. I know it takes time to do the paperwork and everything, but that is later in the evening, like, oh my word, she's actually missing, right? On Sunday, August 7th, and Monday, August 8th, the search for Kylie began. Law enforcement's map says last seen, and we will have a look at a picture of that, at 1 a.m. at Prosser Family Campground, which is quite interesting if you look at that, right? Law enforcement held a press conference on August 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th, and 15th. And we were there for it, right? Uh, community meetings took a place on August 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th. But they've only uploaded one to their official Placer County Sheriff's Office um, page on YouTube, to their, to their channel. They've only uploaded one community meeting, so I wonder what was said in all the others, man, because that one is already very interesting, right? Um, okay, hold on one second, please. So keep sharing your thoughts below. All right. Okay, so moving right along there. Um, I see your messages. I'm just checking as well. Yeah. Okay. Okay. If everyone's just saying hi, don't worry. Things will just settle down in a minute. Okay. Thank you everyone for being here. Make sure you also hit the thumbs up. Okay. That helps a lot. Subscribe if you haven't yet and hit the bell. Okay. Are we ready to continue? So on August 6th at approximately, so, okay. So at 7 p.m. on Saturday, August 6th, Kylie was officially reported as missing. On Sunday, August 7th, Monday, August 8th, the search for Kylie began. And now we saw all those press conferences live together. There hasn't been one since August 15th. Community meetings took place 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th. On August 10th, 20 uh, year old, this is an unrelated case speculatively. Um, they haven't said it's related, but 20 year old Nathaniel Evan Kabakangan was arrested for giving a 15 year old girl a lethal dose of counterfeit Percocet pills. The announcement was made on August 13th, the same day that the press conference was two hours late. So I just found that a little bit interesting. And I still wonder if he had anything to do with Kylie's disappearance. I don't know. And I do also wonder with the 15 year old victim of his. Um, that he gave these pills to. He bought a whole bunch, planned to sell them to young girls, and also it seems to take advantage of them speculatively from what I've read. They don't say her name that I've found, which is a good thing. They need to protect minors, of course. I just I just wonder how they found her and where they found her. What were the circumstances, right? So here they say the announcement, yeah, was made August 13th, the same day the press conference was two hours late, and we were all together for that. Remember that? Yes. Okay. All right. So looking at the investigative timeline, this is just uh, a lot of us before <laughs> I cover this case and 5,000 new or 6,000 new people joined. So welcome to all 6,000 new people. It's great to have you in the Grizzly community. Uh, we like, we, we generally are visual learners. You don't have to be a visual learner to be, I'm just saying we like to see pictures, right? Pictures and dates and really be able to visualize it and you know, I did this in the Gabby Petito case as well, if you didn't see that coverage of it. And, you know, when we have like long autopsies and things and we do a deep dive documents, I like to sometimes just make these presentations so we can just picture it and you can come back to it anytime and just know, wait, what, 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 right? So the photo of Kylie last seen, right, uh, was released on Wednesday, August 10th by law enforcement. That's the day they told us about this photo. And they said uh, video surveillance of Kylie Rodney on 8-5-2022. Then the hoodie, that photo was released on Thursday, August 11th at that press conference. And then at the same time, August 11th, the photo of the car was released. 
which is a photo from the car in winter. They said it's the most accurate depiction of the car, the most accurate photo of the car. And they said there's this uh, Ram sticker, the Ram sticker they told us about later, okay? Um, but I don't believe Kylie owned the car yet in winter, but maybe maybe a family member did or something. Um, there's a, a Grizzly, which is what you are if you're a subscriber over here. You're a Grizzly. Welcome, Grizzlies. Um, that works in the car industry and sent me a full report. And it just seems like the car came from, from Washington before. So I don't know if it, you know, Kylie's only had it for about a month, it seems like. Anyway, so I don't know why they've got a picture of it from winter. It might have been from previous owners, or maybe, I don't know, maybe it is, uh, did, did belong to Kylie's family, and that's just a picture of it from winter. Doesn't matter. That's the car. That's what it looks like, right? Um, yes. Okay, so thank you, Mods. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> You're doing a great job. Now, if you look at uh, on the left hand side, the f this picture of Kylie, this, this photo was released on Friday, August 12th. And they also on that day provided a link to upload anonymous tips via, you know, videos and photos so that people don't have to put in their name, email address and all that kind of stuff. Just upload photos from the party because they need evidence of this party, if Kylie was there or not and what happened, right? And then just side note, Sammy also had a YouTube interview on August 12th. So the same day they released the jewelry pictures and they already told us about the the black hoodie, the car, the last scene photo, and then the jewelry on August 12th, Sammy had a YouTube interview with All American Dream Chaser, which I'm sure you guys have seen. We also broke it down line by line on this channel. She also, um, by the way, provided a part, you know, party proof on August 9th. Mike Gutfield just tells me that that photo is not from this actual party. I don't know why. I have no way to prove it. Literally don't know, but it was around the rumor mill for a bit that it actually is a fake photo, but I can't prove it. Okay, I've done every reverse Google search I possibly can. Um, someone helped me put it through every type of soft software you possibly can, and we can't find any, um, you know, like digital trail of this photo. But man, I just, I don't know. It's just my gut feel over that photo. I'm like, I don't know, I don't know, but never mind. Uh, this is not a speculation episode right now. Now, right now we're focusing on what law enforcement said. Okay. So the photo of the second hoodie was released on August 15th. They say that was the sweatshirt Kylie was wearing at the party. Okay. <laughs> Rammstein. So here we go. We can see the picture that I promised to show you where law enforcement, sorry, that's cut off a little bit. Um, they'd mapped out the area where they want to focus on the search. And they put a dot there, which you can see is right near that where the party was, right? And they said last seen August 6th, 1 a.m. So I don't know if <laughs> I don't know if that's just like, oh, okay, one a let's just put 1 a.m. there instead of 1233. Or they've probably got witness statements that say, Oh yeah, we saw that one, but actually not. You know what I mean? They said no one from the party's come forward. So it's so weird that they say they last seen August 6th, 1 a.m. All right. So but that's at the, the party area. By the way, I will update you guys, you know, on some of the other things like Adventures of Purpose, Dog the Bounty Hunter possibly going out there, other SOs, you guys know what that is, right? S and then offenders, okay, those ones being arrested, um, which are unrelated to the case, but while they've been searching for Kylie and going door to door, they've also arrested some SOs, okay? We use code over here um, because otherwise YouTube picks up a certain language, you know, in the chat and they suppress the reach of an episode. I don't know if you guys knew that, that they do that to content creators because it's not just about how I say it, it's just how you say it. So if you're going to swear or something in the chat, they just, you got to use symbols and signs and all sorts of things so it doesn't look like you're just spelling it out, okay? Quick, keep it grisly. Try not to do that. All right. So um, there was a concert for, I just want to see that. Okay, there was a concert for Kylie organized by the community. So that would be the teens and it was to support Kylie's family and to also raise money for the GoFundMe. They had lemonade stands and everything. And that was Love, Music and Hope on August 13th, 2022 from 1 to 4 p.m. That was also, I think it also ran about an hour late or so. This, yeah, sorry, I just want to say this one. Thanks, Matt. If law enforcement put the photo out they would check metadata and they didn't put the photo out they haven't put a single photo out from the party <laughs> that's why i don't trust the photo at all you know i mean in this in this case i trust law enforcement fully what about you guys in some cases i do not if you've seen any of my coverage <laughs> on other cases sometimes i'm like mm -mm, no i don't trust them no <laughs> 
but in this case I do, right? Okay, so the concert did happen and uh, we looked at some footage of that. Now, now we get into the press conference analysis, okay? So I, I've got paper notes that I've written out um, in all, you know, you guys freaking love notebooks. I've written out pages of freaking notes over here for you and I put it in digital so you got it here. So these are just like bullet points because we love bullet points over here, right? And I've also got <laughs> my little whiteboard with dates so we can just keep track of exactly which day, um, which day is which and what's happening, right? So like the press conference, the first one on August 9th, it was, it was a Tuesday, right? So yes, okay, here we go. Let me, can you see this okay or should I do it like this? What is better for you guys? I think this one might be better. Hold on one second. Just want to take this off. Yeah, okay. Okay, hold on one second. I just want to take a sip of this. Yeah, Greg, I don't really, tr I don't trust GoFundMe either. I, I feel like it's 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 often a, re a red flag, right? <laughs> Well, from my little bit of experience here, I've been on YouTube for just over a year covering true crime cases, and I'm like, Ugh. sometimes GoFundMe's can be like, wait, what? Second, okay. Thanks, thanks, Stefan. And thanks, uh, yeah, thanks, Stefan, and everyone else who answered. Press conference, August 9th. So, they said, we've established a unified command center for this active investigation. Now, I just want to say, yeah, I'm going to look at every sentence they said. We're going to look at words. I'm going to, you know, just look how many times they said words. And like, wow, they said that a lot of times. Huh? You know what I mean? And just analyze it. Okay. So that's what we're doing. They said this is a missing persons investigation. They are working with local, state, and federal agencies. They've got tips coming in from emails, calls, and conversations with kids that they met at the community center. There are 16 agencies. That was at this time, right? On August 9th. 16 agencies, 100 volunteers, canines. So that at that point wasn't yet cadaver dogs, but they later brought in cadaver dogs, right? But canines, vehicles, motorcycles, UTVs, Jeeps, air assets, and boats. They said the priority is those who interacted with Kylie near the last time that she was seen. That is their focus. This is an interesting way they word this, where they say... Um, the incident was handled by Placer County and Nevada County. And as the event expanded, we reached out to partners at the state level and also federally to assist in the search, right? I just want to see exactly who said that because I've got it written here. Uh, so this would be Sergeant Dennis Hack. Uh, Nevada County Sheriff's Office, Sergeant Dennis Hack, the search and rescue coordinator. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Gazina. Yeah, law enforcement is waiting for G. For, is waiting G for someone to spill the beans. I know, right? Okay. So I find it interesting already there. Just to listen very carefully, the incident was handled by Placer County, and as the event expanded, out to partners at the state level and also federally to assist in the search. Search and rescue needs the community's help in providing information to assist in the investigation. All right. So I hope you enjoy this. I love it. I love it analyzing this kind of stuff. So FBI supervisory senior resident Forrest Dell. So remember, wipe, wipe your wipe your slate clean for a second and let's just Look at what just law enforcement said. Okay, that's what we're doing. And then and then we can kind of think of the case with, with like fresh eyes, with a fresh pair of eyes, you know what I mean? All right. For everyone asking, Adventures with Purpose said they're arriving late Friday, so I'm not sure if they have yet, but I would assume it's very soon now. It's becoming late afternoon there, right? Uh, so FBI, Supervisory, Senior Resident Forrestdale said, the FBI continues to take instances where the most vulnerable in our society are victimized. Now, that might just be like a blanket statement, you know, just putting it out there. But I still find it interesting. There's many things I could consider with what he's saying there. You know, it's interesting as well that this is not an abduction case officially because they said there's no evidence of an abduction. So if I take abduction out of this picture and you look at the sentence, I'm like, huh, okay, is it like 
catfishing? Is it like an older dude that, I don't know, convinced her, like, run away with me? I don't know. You know, I'm just like, my mind goes everywhere with this. <laughs> At least doing this has made me think of a lot more possibilities, right? They said, we're going to continue to partner with both agencies as we see this through. Now, Sam Brown, captain of the Nevada County Sheriff's Office, says, we're going to continue working throughout this process and hopefully come up with some positive news that we can bring back to all of you. Troy Sander, Placer Sheriff, FBI, and Nevada County Sheriff's Office have come to help us streamline this process. Now, here are many times they say this process. Like, they call it the incident, okay? They call it an event, an incident, and a process. And then, of course, the teens with the concert call it a crisis. That's just all very interesting language compared to any other missing persons case I've covered. And I've covered a lot of missing persons cases on this channel. This is the first time I hear this kind of language, you know? And it might just be Truckee language, Tahoe language, Nevada County language. I don't know, but it's like this process, this incident, this event, okay? So just pay attention to how they describe it, right? So they uh, they say, Troy Sander, Placer Sheriff, FBI and Nevada County Sheriff's Office have come to help us streamline this process, make it more efficient, make sure we're doing the right things based on best practices. No information is too small. Every piece of information we're gonna put together to build a puzzle. Now that reminds me of the Delphi case. If you haven't seen my coverage of the Delphi case, we sure have deep dived that one as well. Now the building the puzzle and needing the one piece, it sounds like that a little bit, which is a bit scary because that case is still unsolved five years later. So I hope that doesn't happen. But they said every piece of information we're going to put together to build a puzzle, to continue to push forward, to allow the machine to turn. We're not backing down. We're 100% committed. Let the family try to work through this process we're going through you see all right yeah let us know if they're there yes right okay put myself back on screen here the language do they want to sound <laughs> sterile now the public information officer angela musalam said out of the you know sometimes they say <laughs> two to three hundred then i'm like what if they mean literally two people to three hundred do you know what I'm saying? If they say two to 300, I'm like, oh, if I take it literally, it could be two people all the way up to a, a range of 300. But no, on online, on Twitter, they've said on their official accounts, 200 to 300. Okay. So out of the 200 to 300 juveniles and young adults who were at that party at the Prosa campground on Friday evening, somebody knows something about Kylie. Any information can help lead us to Kylie so we can bring her home safely to her family, okay? Kylie is considered to be highly at risk because she's a minor and she's missing and we cannot locate her vehicle. There's a lot of times in their language that they kind of separate, you know, Kylie from her car. Just pay attention to that. I just find it interesting. They're like, where's her car? Like, where is Kylie? And I know, of course, they're looking for both and no one can just assume she's, it's Kylie in her car, but it's just, I'm just, I'm just paying closer to attention to what law enforcement say. I'm like, oh, okay. Highly at risk because she's a minor. She's missing. We cannot locate her or vehicle, but yet it's not an abduction case, right? Oh, my word. So Placer County Sheriff's Detective Sergeant Scott Alford said, the last information we have from the FBI is the 6th at 12.33 a.m., Okay. So they've confirmed that multiple times at these press conferences. Eventually, um, one of the sheriffs was saying, oh, around 12.30 or whatever, he kind of made it a little more vague. But Scott Alford, this detective sergeant, uh, he always says 12.33. If you watch the community meeting on the Placer County Sheriff's Department, uh, which I'd love to break down for you as well, but that one, there he also again says, remember, there's nothing beyond 12.33 that we know, nothing. They have no information beyond 12.33 except on the map they say last seen at 1 a.m., all right? So they say 200 tips, and this was already here on this day. They said 200 tips, many are duplicates. Now, there was, I don't know if you saw it on social media, they put a little post out yesterday to say that a lot of the tips they've received are duplicates. So they don't want people to email and call and use the link. You like, like pick one of them, right, to submit your tip. So they say... Um, 
the last information we have from the FBI is the 6th at 12.33 a.m. And that is why I, I just, it's very hard to listen to anything Sammy says because she says 12.36 a.m. and 12.40. And like, how are you calling Kylie or she calling you at 12.36? Because the FBI themselves has revealed 12.33 a.m., nothing beyond that. 200 tips, many are duplicates. Nothing has expanded beyond that timeline. This is a multifaceted investigation. We are primarily looking at the last known location. We are accepting video from people who were involved. Now, that was also interesting language. <laughs> we're accepting video from people who were involved. Huh? Exactly. Okay. Accepting video from people who were involved. Which, I suppose, involved in the party. Going to the party. That's what I'm trying to say. Before anyone goes and puts the tinfoil hat on, right? Not one tip points us in the direction of an abduction. Okay? All those resources help to recognize her or her vehicle at borders and any sort of location where we can track people and vehicles and those resources are all being utilized. There is zero evidence that supports an abduction, but we're not ruling anything out. This is a missing persons case that we are investigating using every resource. We are using technology to help locate the vehicle. You see there again, they separate the two. <laughs> They're using technology to help locate the vehicle. They didn't say her or a vehicle, but using technology to locate the vehicle. If there's something where somebody knows where she's at or has information, that's what we're needing to put something together. And our hope is that we'll get some sort of piece of information using stuff like this and people in the community that really care and want to help in solving this. Note that at the, at the end of this press conference, this was the one on August 9th um, at the Prosser campground. Well, near the rec center. Was it at the Prosser campground? It was at near the rec center, right? Which is near the campground where they're searching. Yes. At the end of this press conference, Sammy took the mic and said, if you've given your statement to the police, that's fine. I don't care. And the stream cut off shortly after. They cut her off. She was still going to say a whole thing. Someone was filming her. Um, there's one lady filming her, you know, as she got to the mic. But yeah, that... <laughs> We've never seen the rest of what she said there. Yeah, so we can, uh, I'll have a look at what you guys all think after hearing all of this, right? I'm very interested to hear what you guys think after hearing each day of the press conference. So now we're going to look at August 10th, uh, which is a Wednesday. Lieutenant John Barnard said, 50, S 50 FBI personnel are dedicated in the search for Kylie. So I wonder if that's like one per state or if it's 50 in the area or what do you mean, Right. 50 FBI personnel dedicated in the search for Kylie, knocking on doors, going to businesses. They have no new leads. They have lots of videos from the party, but it takes hours and hours to review. So they do all keep saying they do have lots of videos in the party. All right. Okay. They are trying to narrow down the scope. And if Kylie was seen... If Kylie was seen in any of these videos, we are following up on it, they say. By the way, if anyone is here, I see some of you saying like slow the chat, but not necessarily the mods. Just just you can tap the chat bar and just slow it down yourself if you want to see things, okay? So they say we have no new leads, right? There's lots of videos from the party, but it takes hours and hours to review. They are trying to narrow down the scope. And if Kylie was seen in any of these videos, we are following up on it. Nevada County Sheriff's Captain Sam Brown said, we are still in unified command. They're using this app called Cal Topo app, and I will show you that um, later. I just want to make a note of it quickly so that I don't forget. Hold on. I've got notes of what we're going to discuss afterwards. One of them will be the Cal Topo app. Yes. All right. So they are using that app. They said they are struggling with clues searches aren't super successful expanding beyond the point last seen okay they are expanding beyond the point last seen and hopefully capturing right aways that was an interesting choice of words there they are expanding beyond the last scene and hopefully capturing right aways and things that would make sense for somebody who is leaving the area and we're doing the best we can in an attempt to locate kylie 
Yes. Okay. Okay, so it's hard to look somebody in the face and tell them that you don't have those answers. Uh, here, Sam Brown was referring to looking at Kylie's parents and saying, I'm so sorry, we, we just still don't have the answers. He said that's very difficult, right? Um, the photo of the black hoodie, the Lana Del Rey hoodie, the car, and surveillance was released, which is why now you can visualize it because that's what I showed you before, right? Hello to everyone. Surveillance photo described as a black bodysuit, green Dickies pants, black studded belt, and black van shoes from a local business in Truckee, which was at 6 or 8 p.m. Now, law enforcement described the outfit that way. They said, those are the green Dickies pants. The reason I say it is because when Sammy was shown the photo on an interview, of course, she said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, was, I remember wearing that because of, you know, being in the woods and all this, but her pants were different. Now, I don't know if those look like green Dickies pants or not, but law enforcement said that surveillance photo describes a black bodysuit, green Dickies pants, black studded belt, and black van shoes from a local business in Truckee, 6 or 8 p.m. The hoodie was loaned to Kylie on the day that she disappeared. They believe she was in possession of this hoodie when she disappeared, which uh, we saw Kylie's mom say it belongs to one of her friends. Now, I wonder if this, if there's any possibility of this being, which I know Kylie's parents said it isn't, but that's just for, if there's a 1% chance that Kylie left herself. I don't know if that's why they showed us the hoodie. If she like packed the hoodie, did she pack a bag? That shop that she was at at 6 or 8 p.m., did she buy stuff to pack or what? You know what I mean? And then she was going camping the next morning at 9, which is also... A great way to buy time as a teenager is be like, oh no, I was in the house and I was at the house, we were in camping, whatever. I don't know. I'm just considering all options as well, you're right? Um, because we cannot just listen to Sammy. I don't even think we should really listen to Sammy at all at this point. You do get people, and I'm not accusing her of being this. I'm just saying there is this this possibility in life of being a pathological liar and people who like the spotlight. And that combination can be very interesting. So I want to pay attention to what law enforcement is saying here, right? The hoodie was loaned to Kylie on the day she disappeared. They believe she was in possession of this hoodie when she disappeared. We urge the public to please, if anybody knows these two to 300 juveniles or young adults who were at the Prosser family campground between Friday evening and early Saturday morning to please come forward. You can email the tip line. Then this is the day they made an email tip line, right? That was sheriff underscore Tahoe invest tips at uh, sorry, I think it's placer.ca.gov. Updates will be shared on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And they said out of hundreds of tips, no one, not one person has said that they saw Kylie leave the party out of hundreds of tips. That is extremely strange. <laughs> not one person out of two to 300 people, 200 to 300 people. Wow. They have also sent out cadaver dogs to cover all bases. They've also used sonar in the reservoir. The only known lead is the surveillance video from the local business in Truckee. The only solid evidence they can find of Kylie. Now later, of course, remember, there was the picture that they saw of the, at the party of, from videos of her in the white hoodie. So bear that in mind, but just follow along chronologically, right? We're busy doing the investigative timeline. Uh, there is nothing in the investigation to point uh, to the person who loaned Kylie the hoodie seeing her on that day. <laughs> That's very interesting as well. Because if it's a friend's hoodie, right? Which friend? And they said there is nothing in the investigation to point to the person who loaned Kylie the hoodie seeing her on that day. Do you see what I mean? Like a lot of stuff that law enforcement says... <laughs> depending on whose hoodie it is, would, would debunk a lot of what Sammy said or call-ins or people, you know, everywhere. Just, I just, laser beam focus here is very interesting. What do you guys think? That one, that one was like, sorry, what? Because I thought it was Mags' hoodie. I thought they drove together. Sorry, what now? Whose hoodie is it? Is it, is it Mags? Is it Kate? Which other friend is it? Whose hoodie was that? Is it a guy? Wow. There's nothing in the investigation to point 
to the person who loaned Kylie the hoodie, seeing her on that day. The hoodie was in her possession the day she went missing. They cannot confirm if she was wearing it at all on that day. Her phone was turned off. That's the language they used. This is not my language, by the way, guys. This is like literally transcribing the press conference, but I'm putting it into bullet points for you, right? Her phone was turned off shortly after 12.30 a.m. on Saturday morning, August 6th, and has been off this whole time. That's what Angela Musalam said, okay? Yes, so the press conference, Thursday, August 11th. Let's just check my little calendar, yeah. Now, this was day five of the search. They said they are hoping to give her family closure, hoping to bring Kylie back safely to her family. Yes, they have more than 500 tips on this day, 380 leads, including more than 300 email leads. Detectives want more videos of that night. They have received a lot of videos from the party, including some of a fight that occurred at the party, and they would like more videos of that or more information. Captain Sam Brown said, we are still lacking clues. So our searches are based on probabilities of scenarios and different types of incidents. Huh? Listen to it. We are still lacking clues, so our searches are based on probabilities of scenarios and different types of incidents, and so we need information. We need clues. Pictures of Kylie's jewelry was then shown. She was wearing that jewelry when she went missing. Releasing the photo, they said they are releasing the photo out of respect for the family because the family provided the photo. All right? So that's interesting as well. Um, someone in the crowd asked if there's any connection between the fight and Kylie's disappearance. They said no connection has been found between the fight at the party and Kylie's disappearance. She's under 18, so very at risk. They are treating the case as an abduction solely based on her vehicle not being located. Treating it like an abduction, but not labeling it as one. They said, is there any specific location? This is what... Um, Someone in the crowd asked from the community, right? Is there a specific location to search or is it still broad at this point? And Sam Brown said, it's tough to answer. I mean, to truthfully answer. Okay. We have a point last seen and a point last known, confirmed by digital evidence and individuals. And that's our focus. So I would assume that the point last seen would have been the digital evidence, I guess, and where the phone last pinged. And then they have the point, oh, wait, and a point last known, confirmed by, well, yeah, probably individuals. All right, I hope you guys are following along. Now, this was interesting with Sam Brown um, presenting scenarios. He said, was this or is this a missing person? that went off the road, and this is the order he did it in. Is this a missing person that went off the road? A traffic collision that occurred? Some sort of abduction or even a violent crime or any of those types of scenarios? With the amount of time that has passed, somebody could cross into a different uh, country, sorry, not county, a different country, a different continent, so to focus a search is complicated. The reason we have all the press conferences and community meetings, why, why do they have it? Is trying to use code red to get the word out so that people can keep looking. They said the reason we have all the press conferences and community meetings and using code red is to get the word out so that people can keep looking. That's why they had it every day. So it's interesting that now, of course, they've scaled back quite some, right, quite a bit, but that was the reason, because I'm like, whoa, I've never, <laughs> I've never seen a case where they have a press conference every day, just about, I mean, the 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th, and 15th was a, wow, press conference, and then community meetings as well, but it's to get the word out so that people can keep looking, all right, so this is, I hope you're finding it very, I found this very interesting. This was like a whole new thing for me when I looked at all this. I'm like, wait, do I, like carefully, sentence by sentence, right? 
We just want the word out so that we have more eyes out because we don't have an exact spot to look for. And that is unusual, especially with a large object, object like a car. We don't have an exact spot to look for. That's unusual. I repeat myself for emphasis so you can see. That is unusual, especially with a large object like a car. Now, for all of you who look at the drone footage and you see things and you screenshot them, remember, I'm not law enforcement. You need to submit that to the tip line. Like, but I mean, literally, there's a link, uh, the link tree link. You can upload photos anonymously there. Circle what you see, do what you can, and submit it there because it could help them. That's the whole reason of having the drone footage, right? And that's the reason I shared it on my channel so there can be more eyes on it. Just remember, I'm not law enforcement. So flooding my inbox with that stuff is not the greatest idea because I already have a mountain of emails. You need to send it straight to law enforcement. Some of you have found a few things from the drone footage. So Angela Musalam said, in case anybody, now, now this was a question about the necklaces, like what's up with the necklaces, why are you showing? Now I found this an interesting sentence as well. She said, in case anybody from family or friends is searching for her, these are the literal words said, okay? In case anybody from family or friends is searching for her and maybe happens to come across these necklaces, We'd want anybody who comes across this to please call us immediately because that certainly will provide us a new tip in a new direction. That just sounds weird. Like, what? <laughs> you know, and I know it's a very stressful situation and they might say things a little bit differently. I don't know, you know, but in case, why do you want to show us the necklaces? Oh, in case anybody, not from the community, not anybody out there, this time, they didn't talk about the public or party goers. They said, if anybody from family or friends is searching for her and maybe happens to come across these necklaces, we'd want anybody who comes across this to please call us immediately because that certainly will provide us a new tip and a new direction. Don't know what to say about that. There are no law enforcement officially related rewards. Did you guys know this? Because I did not know that. I thought the reward was hmm, from law enforcement, but it isn't. <laughs> They said, we understand that family and friends have rewards in place, but that is not something we can speak on. What? Very interesting. Wow. So it's family and friends have the rewards in place, but not law enforcement. They don't have an official reward out there. So, okay. There's more than 500 tips at this point, including video evidence. Within all of that, this was a question. Were there any sightings of Kylie? Okay, <laughs> that was the question. You have now more than 400 tips, including video evidence. Within all of that, were there any sightings of Kylie? They said, nothing has panned out. Um, Stefan says, why can't they speak on? I know, right? <laughs> a lot of these things I'm presenting might make you question a few things, but this is, this is great. This, forget who we've been listening to so far and look at this carefully and go, huh, <laughs> wait, there's a lot more to this here. <laughs> I know we watched the press conferences together, but it's definitely, I find bullet points. Mm, mm, sometimes if you really, really go and look at the words, you're like, what? Wow. Okay. They can't speak on the rewards, right? So oddly worded. Okay. So they said, if you, the juvenile, are scared to talk to the police. What should they do? This was a question. If the juveniles and party goers are scared to talk to the police, what do you want them to do? Do you know what the answer was? They didn't say, go talk to Sammy, go talk to teens, go to the teen to teen center. They said, if you, the juvenile, are scared to talk to police, and we know our uniform might be intimidating or whatever, but then ask a coach, a mentor, or an adult to talk to the police for you. That was the answer right there. They didn't say, well, we've actually, we're working with the teens. We've actually got teen to teen talks. <laughs> no, they didn't say that. You see, I'm just going to put it like this for a second. Right. Then they said, someone in the community at this press conference said, hmm, Homeland Security, we see that uh, you've removed them from the list. Why is that? And they said, Homeland Security was removed from the list of agencies that were helping them, right? They helped with some technical aspects of the investigation. 
it caused a lot of questions. And that may be why they've been removed at this point. What? <laughs> like Homeland Security. Oh, man, I had it here earlier. They. What? Just hold on. There we go. I'll tell you now. Um, what does USA? Right? Protection of. Okay, so Homeland Security. They're like you know, control the safety and security, of course, of America, but they also then look at borders and things like that, right? So I was like, huh, interesting. They were, they, it caused a lot of questions. <laughs> Too many questions were being asked and then we removed them from the list. <laughs> I find it very interesting. I'm like, oh, so you don't want people to know that maybe you could have been looking across the border. What? What are we saying here, man? <laughs> then this is one time they gave the teens credit so remember before that they said what should teens do if they're scared to talk to you they said get an adult to talk to us they didn't recommend the teen to teen talks but here they said the teens have created a mapping system for searchers a system that allows you to log on to the cal topo app the goal is people helping to narrow the search area so they 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 said this now listen to it, and I do believe this was a tiny, tiny slip of the tongue. We want people who are actively looking to use the app. So not like he said, um, sorry, I think this was Sam Brown. Not when you're going to concerts, that was the example. Not when you're just living in your normal everyday life. Don't just have the app on when you're doing whatever. We want people who are actively looking to use the app, who are staring off on the side of the highway. That means they do think there, of course, is a possibility she crashed. That is a very likely possibility. But then he said, or walking around Stampede Lake. Now remember, uh, we can look at the maps after. Remember there's the Prosser Reserve or Reservoir. I say Reserve, not a Reservoir. And then there's Bocker and Stampede as well. Just to the northeast and like north northeast and northeast of this Prosser Reservoir. So I just, I'm like, wait, what? I had to listen to it about four times. Sorry, what now? <laughs> um, I will put these up here and there and I will address them all afterwards. Thank you so much. So we want people who are actively looking to use the app, who are staring off on the side of the highway, meaning staring off like, whoa, I see a car there, whatever. You know what I mean? Okay. Or walking around Stampede Lake. Stampede Lake. Because remember, speculatively, there was possibly... A second location. The party all most left at 12:30. Where'd they go? And then we speculated before. Maybe they went to that Bocker campground or Stampede because maybe it would be quieter and maybe other campers wouldn't be complaining. Whatever it is, maybe they wreak havoc at one campsite and go to the next one. You know what I mean? So Stampede Lake is one we looked at. And he, he, Sam Brown here said, "Or oh, walking around Stampede Lake." Okay, it might just be whatever. It might just be him saying that. But I'm like, oh. They said at the press conference on Friday, August 12th. Okay, so this was now, there was 9th, 10th, 11th. This is now the fourth press conference in a row that they had. They said, this is day six of the search. They've received more than 900 tips. Oh, sorry, that was actually better this way. Um, I spelled that wrong. More than 900 tips, 9,000 hours. Tahoe Truckee community have been extremely helpful. Please continue to notify the sheriff's office if you have a tip that can lead to Kylie. Then they said, it's recently come to our attention and we have received several reports of adults trying to discourage people and possibly teens coming forward with information that could help us locate Kylie. Okay. Interesting. I won't speculate too far. I just want you to see it and make up your own mind what you think is going on here. But I'm like, huh. The sole purpose is to bring Kylie home to her family and we need the community's help. So they basically mean who the, who knows? It's almost like who knows where she went, who lost saw her, what happened, right? Obvious. So they've received reports from adults around the community because they asked then, well, from who, which adults? They said from around the community in the North Lake Tahoe Truckee area who we understand are dissuading people from coming forward and that impedes our investigation. 
We want to find Kylie. We want to bring her home to her family. These adults will be held accountable for impeding with the investigation if it is proven to be so. Because that was another one. You know, like... <laughs> um, sorry, I'm just checking some quickly here. That was another one. <laughs> right? The communities, the teenagers. So there will be consequences if those adults impede the investigation, if they can prove that they impeded the investigation. They said um, you can anonymously upload photos and videos from the Prosser family campground party. They even if there was a second location, they seemed, of course, to be very interested in Prosser family campground, that party, the first party. Well, maybe it's the second one. Maybe they had a pre-party. I don't know. Before party. And then there's the party. And maybe there was a second party. I don't know. Um, those other two are speculations, but they are focusing here because that's, of course, uh, where Kylie's phone was last active and at 12.33 a.m. it was turned off. They said, we received tips from across the country. I want to know if that's county or country. Sorry for some typos. Okay, I typed a lot today. <laughs> received tips from across the country. I remember that, yeah. And they are not discounting anything. As we continue to learn where Kylie may be and where her vehicle is located. You see, again, just a little bit separate language. Where is Kylie? Where is her vehicle? We are very interested in seeing these photos and videos. And there again, they said, yep, we're looking for a needle in a haystack, but we don't know where the haystack is. That sounds scary. And like there's the possibility of being across the border. Anyway. Where's the haystack? Which country are we talking about? Or something. I'm not trying to fill in the blanks. I'm just, that's what I read from it. But I don't know what you guys think about it. So then there was a press conference again on Saturday, August 13th. They said, this is day seven of the search for Kylie. There were over 200 search and rescuers, air and water, and more than a thousand leads at that point. They found a potential burial site located near the campground. That was on August 12th by a search and rescue ground team. Kylie's family was notified of the potential development. That must have been terrible for them. The FBI responded to secure the scene and they recovered the remains of a dog. One team, one mission, one goal is to find Kylie. So they reiterated that we are one, we are one team, we have one mission and one goal and that's to find Kylie. There's a concert we understand happening to support Kylie's family. And that's how they worded that. Like, oh, we hear there's a concert. To support Kylie's family. All we want to know is where is Kylie? Where is her vehicle? Okay. And I will pay attention to you guys after this presentation. Captain Sam Brown said, Kylie's phone last pinged for the data. Kylie's phone last pinged for the data points, right? Were near the water just as much on land as it was on the water. And he said on the water, just as much as just as much on land as it was on water. At this point, we are looking for in, uh, well, sorry, we are looking for small, this is the words you use. <laughs> it's a weird sentence, but at this point, we are looking for small and anything evidence-wise as opposed to cars, people, things of that nature, even phones. We're trying to make it tighter. Huh. Okay this point we're looking for small and anything evidence wise as opposed to which means they're not looking for cars people and things of that nature even phones i still think they're looking for the phone in the water and i think that's what adventures of purpose might come out to help with to see if they could maybe find something i'll at this point from everything they've said i'm going to be so shocked if they find kylie's car in the water Again, I would say shock, but not really at, at the same time, because there's been so many, you know, speculations that we've had that that is still a, a, a small possibility, I suppose. But like, what? Like, here he says, we are looking for small and anything evidence-wise, as opposed to cars, people, things of that nature, even phones. We're trying to make it even tighter. Swimmers did some surface swimming. We didn't want to disturb the water, even underneath, because that can cause its own problems. And divers have been deployed as well. We continue to look for that item as well. And he literally said those words. He didn't say which item. He just said, Sam Brown, we continue to look for that item as well. 
I wish someone had said, what do you mean by that item? What's that item? We'll look for that item. <laughs> Which item? The phone? Then he said, just because her phone last pinged there does not mean that's where the phone stopped pinging. What? There's lots of reasons why those notifications or data points could be lost. Okay. Interesting. All right? <laughs> Just because her phone last pinged there does not mean that's where the phone stopped pinging. There's lots of reasons why those notifications or data points could be lost. Prosser Lake is where we are focused right now. But that doesn't mean that's the last location. That's what they said. That's what they said. Last location known was the ping around 12.30 in the morning. And what's that detective's name? I believe his name is Barnhart. Hold on. We've got some notes flapping. He keeps saying 12.33. You know, at the community meeting, at these pressers, he's like 12.33. Sam Brown says around 12.30. And I think the guy's name is Barnhart. Yeah, he's like at 12.33. They asked also how deep is it, and Sam Brown said the deepest point for Prosser, from what I was told, is 57 feet. So even though they've searched on the surface and about 60 feet out around the shoreline, looking for a small item or evidence, they said that they haven't yet searched the total depth of it, which is also why I believe Adventures with Purpose will help a lot just to search the bottom of that reservoir which is very very scary that is like honestly the most fearful job i can imagine imagine it oh my word that just scares the crap out of me what about you guys yeah the, the, the case is bizarre now there was another wait that's the wrong date it was monday the 15th i'm sorry for that typo there was a press conference on monday the 15th of august where they said we want to tell you about the update on the investigation and search for kylie rodney we are trying to protect the family from the ups and downs that have occurred throughout this whole ordeal. So remember they called it, and I understand that, but they said it's a it's a process, it's an incident, it's an event, and then the concert called it a crisis. crisis. But law enforcement says process, incident, event, and here it's this whole ordeal. Moving into a more, they are moving into a more limited but continuous search and rescue effort. And here they said our biggest problem is where do we go? And how do we keep sustaining this? We have to switch modes and kind of focus on the investigative end and try to figure out where do we go from there? Hmm. They said they're coming into hunting season, so they're hoping to have eyes out all over the place. Lieutenant Josh Barnhart said, today we have 50 plus detectives that are out and about interviewing and following up on those tips We've married up with the FBI. They request more video, please, and more witness accounts from the party. After this week, we will be modifying things to a task style, uh, sorry, task force style. That means our resources will continue to move forward, but in somewhat of a different manner. Angela Musalem said, we did receive video evidence showing Kylie at the party wearing the white sweatshirt. Man, when asked, can you release that image? They said they don't want to, um, what's it, compromise the investigation. That same day, right, Kylie was loaned. This was important that they stressed. Both sweatshirts are still important. That same day, Kylie was loaned the black sweatshirt, and we never detailed or said that she was wearing the black sweatshirt. We believe Kylie was in possession of the black sweatshirt at some point during the evening. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, Stefan. And just hang in there, guys. Um, if this is boring for any of you, which I don't find this boring at all, but if it is for anyone, hang in there because we are going to discuss Dog the Bounty Hunter possibly going out there, Adventures with Purpose arriving today. We might look at Sammy's TikTok. I've got your actual TikTok. I don't know if you guys have seen it. And we'll look at the Cal Topo app as well um, and all that. So there's lots of things we could still look at right after this, okay? We've also received confirmation that there is a RAM sticker that is located on the back of Kylie's vehicle right underneath the rear wiper blade, they said. This was from Angela Musalem. 
we need the community to come forward. Now, this was another interesting sentence to say, to clarify if they also see a ram sticker on the back of Kylie's vehicle. What? <laughs> Ombre, sorry for ombre alert. Why no amber alert? And they said because the criteria has not been met, which is still interesting because in so many missing persons cases, of course, of minors, wow, no car, no Kylie. Like normally you'd like, oh, amber alert, but they say the criteria was not met. Social media coverage has accomplished what the amber alert could, and certainly if things do change and that criteria changes, we would again apply for it and see if that will happen from Sacramento. Now, Sacramento is 118 miles away. So I don't know if they have, I have no idea because I'm Amber Alert. I don't know how that works when they apply for it, if they have to apply at like a main city or something. But they did say, we will see if that will happen from Sacramento. Then uh, has, has anyone from the community and surrounding area been uncooperative with investigators? And they said, well, for the most part, everyone's been very cooperative. And that time when they talked about the parent or adults or whoever telling teens and others not to come forward, they said they believe that was an isolated incident and an obstacle, an obstacle that they managed to overcome. They said they don't want to compromise the investigation, so they are not releasing the image of Kylie wearing the sweatshirt at the party. Now, why? <laughs> like, who's with her in the picture and what is she doing and what's going on, right? We will hold a press, we will hold press, they, oh, so are there going to be more? Because, I mean, at that point, we also wondered, are there going to be more? And they said, we will hold press conferences as needed. The CalTopo app has been very helpful. We have not released any maps of their owners yet, like their maps of where they've searched. They've got this CalTopo app to show where everyone else has searched, but they haven't released any maps as yet. We may choose to do so in the future. So they're searching in their own place. Imagine if it's at the Stampede place. I don't know, but they're searching in their own place. Um, everyone... This was an interesting sentence to end off on at the last press conference. Everyone is pretty familiar with the epicenter of where this all occurred. And it is worldwide from that point, you know, expanding out of where do you go? What? That sounds very hectic. We do have updates. We hope to have updates, sorry, for everyone, for everybody soon. There has not been a press conference since August 15th. Okay. Thank you. 